Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or simply hoping to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about what I think is one of the most fascinating of the non-medication treatments for ADHD. And this one just makes Nature. me shake my head. Yeah. I think it's cool. It is really, really fascinating. It reminds me of the, the podcast that we did in the middle of last year about the um, the Japanese, was it Japanese or Chinese? Um, I know it was um, call it. Eastern uh, Asia. Um what was it now? I, I know. I can't remember the, the name of it. Nature bathing. Uh, uh, it was bathing in nature, basically. Bathing. Forest bathing. Forest bathing. Right. Which I, yeah. Not nature bathing. Forest right. bathing. Um, and, and it has nothing to do with taking a bath in nature. It had to do with being in nature and being exposed to right. that mm-hmm. environment and that, that setting. And so today, when we're talking about nature, it's very similar to that. Right. Right. Um, and this is written from an article in Psychology Today written by Dr. Victoria Dunkley, right. um, who wrote a book um, mm-hmm. about uh, technology fasts. Right. Fast as in uh, stop using. Stop using, yeah. And, and she recommends a one-month fast for kids who are um, overstimulated by electronics. Right. Give them a one-month fast. She said it resets their brain. Mm-hmm. In fact, the title of her book is Reset uh, the Brain. And so... Um, She's written extensively on this topic of ADHD Mm -hmm. and the effects of technology. Now she takes this turn and gives us a, what is, I think, a nice little uh, literature review on a a very um, under-discussed topic, which is the effects of green. She calls it green. Yeah, she calls it green therapy. Green, Green times effects Mm -hmm. on ADHD yeah Mm -hmm. so so in this article she as you said um, she gives us a literature review she goes through uh, uh, several um, they're mainly from um, uh, two researchers Mm -hmm. at the University of Illinois Kuo and uh, Taylor and and Taylor and they um, they They have the landscape and human health laboratory landscape and human health laboratories. So they have they study the relationship of landscape to um, wellness, human human uh, behavior, human wellness. Yeah, mm-hmm. and fascinating. it's fascinating right. because what you know, and, and we were talking about this a little bit mm-hmm. as we were getting ready to um, record. Mm-hmm. It, it's fascinating to think about because I sort of like when we were talking about um, meditation. Mm-hmm. I think people began the t- discussion about nature right. with um, some skepticism. Skepticism, right. You know, they, mm-hmm. they look at, you know, think about hippies, and they right. think of, and from, an, from a negative connotation. And there's all those bad jokes about right. tree huggers and, you yeah. know, all that, you, right. all that stuff. But <laughs> when we look at some of the research and we look at some of the things that we right. know anecdotally from our own lives... There's some validity to it, right? You know, right. our biology has not changed all that much mm-hmm. in the last thousand years, two thousand years. If we wanted to go back a little bit, several farther, that many, yeah, right, maybe more than that. Probably biology, more than that. Our biology hasn't changed all that much. Mm-hmm. During those times, we lived outdoors, right? You know, we lived in caves and in different dwellings that we made uh, for ourselves, uh, but we spent the vast majority of our time outside. And we slept at night, mm-hmm. and we were awake and active during the day, right. and that typically would never change. Right. Okay. So, during that time, <clears throat> you know, one would have to assume that some of the conditions, and, mm-hmm. and, you know, from anthropological studies, it certainly looks to be the case, that a lot of the conditions, especially mental health conditions, mm-hmm. that, we, that we struggle with mm-hmm. now... Mm-hmm. weren't present then exactly right no they weren't so, whether it's you know mental health conditions but also medical issues right medical conditions diabetes and mm-hmm. you know some of the heart problems and stuff like that right 
because they spent so much more time out, outdoors. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we're doing some research in this area is really important because right. what is this relationship between being outdoors and being in right. nature um, on our overall wellness? Right. Mm -hmm. And as she writes about in this article, there's some evidence to suggest that being outdoors helps with ADHD. It's just, it's just amazing. She reports on um, actually four, five, six, seven studies mm -hmm. um, that she sort of just mm -hmm. gives these nice little synopsis, synopses of. Um, in the first one, uh, she, she cites a relationship between green settings mm -hmm. and improved attention. So there, right. was, there was a study done. ADHD, uh, children's attention after playing in a variety of settings, and they found that the green settings had the most profound mm -hmm. Um, effect on att on children's attention. And when we think about green, again, we're thinking about and nature. We're thinking green? about trees, yeah. and we're thinking about grass, and we're thinking about um, mm -hmm. foliage. Right. But just playing in that setting mm -hmm. improves attention. Right. Okay. Um, another, and that was from 2001. Right. So it's been around mm -hmm. for a little bit, so right. about 17 years. Mm -hmm. There was another one in 2004. Right. Um, it's the green setting. They tried what they did here is they put children into different settings to see what it was in different conditions. And they found that regardless of gender, socioeconomic status, or living environment, um, no matter what the, and, and they put kids into different settings. Mm -hmm. So there were, um, and the green setting, they didn't explain all of them, but they explained the green setting mm -hmm. um, was the most effective mm -hmm. in, um, in reducing activity. It wasn't, it wasn't the activity itself. It was the setting that it occurred in, right? Which is which is interesting because what they said was that it wasn't, it wasn't just the freedom of movement. It wasn't the right. um, ability to burn off mm -mm. hyperactivity. Because you would think that, right? right? That you, well, you're outside running around, right? Nope, didn't matter. And they said even when you control for that, right? It was the outdoors and the green setting that that right. made the made the difference. And so the first study was the green setting, mm -hmm. and then the the next this other study was. Well, maybe it's the activity that they were doing. Right. No, it's not the activity. There's something about mm -hmm. the green that mm -hmm. seemed to make the difference. The third study um, was... 2009. This was and they, really... They, and, and what you notice is as we go through these studies, they're, they're, they're narrowing it down. Right. Because they're, what, what good researchers do is they begin with a big idea. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they develop a, a theory or a hypothesis right. and then they test that hypothesis and they say yeah but these this could be it could be this could be another explanation for why we've got these findings else. and right. so then they do another study to rule that out mm -hmm. then they do another study to rule out those limitations right. and in this one they were looking at well okay so if it's being outdoors mm -hmm. let's look at different types That's of right. outdoors so rural versus suburban versus urban right. um, outdoor areas because mm -hmm. you're going to have differences in greenery right. um, in those mm -hmm. types of, um, across those types of playgrounds, right. we found more. Right. Again, it was something about the green spaces. Right. Okay. Right. And then um, this was fascinating. We, um, many, some of our re readers might not know the digit span test. Right. Uh, what you do is you give a series of numbers right. and have the person say them back to you. And we think it's a reflection of attentional capacity, you know, the ability right. to attend and focus and think about what you're hearing. And so the study was done that they took kids for 20 minute walks in a park. Right. And when they got back their digit, because of the walk, they think because of the walk, the, their digit span scores increased, you know? Right. So, so again, here's one, you know, just a walk in the park will increase some cognitive ability. Okay. And the, 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 the very interesting thing that she notes here is mm -hmm. that the effect size, I mean, right. sort of looking at the power mm -hmm. or the predictability of, of the study, was so great yep. that it was equal to that of Ritalin. Right. So it was, it was, was just was... as powerful of a finding as you know, studies that look at the effects of Ritalin mm -hmm. on attention. That, um, of, of the immediate effects of Ritalin. Right. So uh, right. this isn't to say that you can take your child for a walk instead of giving medication. Right. But the effect of the walk is as um, mm -hmm. robust right. um, as, uh, as medication, as right. a drug. Right. You know? So, so uh, I guess the message here is don't underestimate right. the importance. Yeah. Now this is fascinating. Yeah. These are some other... Well, this, 
this one and I reversed these two because I started to read the second one. Yeah. And I thought, this is so much. And so I, I accidentally put it first. But it, I've read this research before. Mm-hmm. That, but, but I read it with poverty. Right. Um, if you take a child out of an impoverished environment mm-hmm. and move that child to a more privileged right. environment, you move, you move from a impoverished neighborhood right. to a middle class neighborhood. Right. Cognitive abilities increase. Right. Just right. by just by mm-hmm. that geographic relocation. Right. Okay. And apparently it's the same with this. If you move from a cement building right. to a wooded right. or green area, mm-hmm. cognitive abilities increase. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's fascinating research. It's fascinating research. And, and it does... Um, it, you know, I think anecdotally... We see this. It's not just from the research. You know, most of us, right. you know, if we go for a walk, mm-hmm. uh, you know, go f- walk down a path or, you know, through the woods right. or something, we feel better. We, we feel uh, uh, mm-hmm. more relaxed. We may feel more uh, rejuvenated. That's what um, it and so, and it doesn't uh, surprise us that, you know, a lot of times when we do meditations, we listen to nature sounds when we do meditations. Yeah. So, so birds and waves and wind, right? Yeah, um, outdoorsy types of things, and right. so I, I think that there's really something to this idea of getting and finding some time outside. And what what do a lot of kids with ADHD do now? They play video games. Right oh. now, video games. Mm-hmm. You know that that's a that's an argument for a different day. But in the very least, we should balance our time with video games with our time outside. You think of, um, we talked about that with nutrition, that mm-hmm. not only are you eating the wrong foods, but you're missing the right foods. Right. And here you have the same thing here. Right. Not only are you uh, doing something that addles the brain with right. all the electronics, but you're missing something right. that might have a positive effect. Right. So again, you have two things yeah. uh, pulling you in the same direction. Right. And as this author recommends, right. you know, taking some time to unplug, right. to, you know, sort of protect yourself from the right. the effects of the electronics and adding in the time outside could be helpful. That's true. When we what because what we're encouraging parents to do now is you have to take breaks from electronics, mm-hmm. okay? This mm-hmm. this idea of binge electronic using. Right. That's what's bad. Mm-hmm. Not only because the electronics are bad, yeah. but what you're missing is bad. Yeah. Okay? It, it don't don't forget that you're giving up things to play video games right. or to be on your phone or to you know, uh, right. don't give up the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, a room with a view. Mm-hmm. The next one is a room with a view. Yeah. That was another movie, right? That was another movie. That was, a, was that? that Alfred Hitchcock, right? No. No? No. Who was that? It was uh, an Italian director. It was in Venice. Yeah. By an Italian director. I get his name. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, oh. But a room with a view. Yeah, it was, it was filmed in Venice. I think it was filmed in Venice. Anyway, um, what they discovered was, uh, I think this was about girls in particular, right? Wasn't this about females? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who, if they had a view, if they could just look out the mm-hmm. window at a green space, yeah. that um, there uh, there was an improvement in self-discipline. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. I, that was, to me, the most fascinating of all of them. Yeah. Yeah, because it's... I mean, it, just it's, to be able to look out a window. Well, and it goes to the, the importance of... Of just the connection. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even have to be right. a physical connection yeah. walking through. It, it's just some type of connection through seeing or because she was inside, in some way. right? But but just to be able to see that mm-hmm. um, somehow settled her, right? And and I, I wonder about this genetic. That's true. It could be evolutionary biology right. that explains this. Just yeah. to be able to see nature. Mm-hmm. So you think of all those children who grew up in concrete jungles, right? And the effect that that well, that has. Well, and I and I think that you know. Certainly, this that study was done in two thousand two, mm-hmm. and and you know uh, I would love to see if they're they're doing have done some subsequent studies, but you know if if you can look out your window and see some of those things, then mm-hmm. certainly you're going you're having some other interaction right. um, with it, and and I would be interested to know because we again as we were talking before we started recording, you know is it the increase in oxygen in the air because right. of so much. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, and, and less pollution in the right. air because of so much greenery. Mm. Is it because of 
um, uh, what is it? You know, is it just some primordial connection right. between us and the environment? I right. guess. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. you know, if you have a kid with ADHD, mm-hmm. get him outside. Because, Go for a walk. You know, the, and this last study sort of again points us in that same direction. Yeah. That if it's a barren landscape, mm-hmm. they they put kids into a barren landscape, and they found an uh, increase in mental fatigue. Right. That it actually tires you out mm-hmm. to be in um, in a in a barren landscape. Yeah. And, and it creates more mental fa- mental fatigue. Right. And mental fatigue we know is associated with um, dysregulation, mm-hmm. with anger, mm-hmm. with viol- increased violence, increased aggr- increased aggression, increased violent behaviors. Uh, being on a barren landscape, and I think of was it Mad Max or some of those yeah. movies that are yeah. always on barren landscapes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and people tend to. It's always a desert, right? Yeah, always, you know. Now I know why. Right yeah. now I know. Okay, this is why they're always filmed in a desert because yeah. a barren landscape mm-hmm. produces those. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, but this is really, really fascinating stuff. And again, I think it's the person who wrote this article advocates that we regulate. Mm-hmm. The use of electronics at uh, at all ages, but mm-hmm. especially in children. Right. But she also offers this other um, thing that we right. should be doing. Yeah. We, we should should be. be out where it's green. We should yeah. be outside. Yeah. So interesting stuff. Try that. You it know, means... when you think about what we talked about this week about changing brainwave patterns, mm-hmm. getting outside, uh, eating better. Um, uh huh. If you could do some combination of these, right. if you keep these five things in mind, if you meditated combina- in the in the forest, right. for example, yeah. yeah, or if you just add these to your treatment protocols, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. if you have a child who tends to be a little inattentive or hyperactive, um, try these things. Yeah, I mean, like they're free. Everything here is free. Absolutely. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, that is it for today. Yeah. And, and and this week. week. Yeah. 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 So until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. Thanks for sharing this episode of the Mental Breakdown and Psychridge podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you will find all of our previous podcasts and much more. We would be honored if you would become a patron through patreon.com, where any donation you can manage will go to the development and creation of more content. Just visit patreon.com slash the mental breakdown for more information. Thanks again for listening. Have an awesome day. And we look forward to being back in your feed tomorrow morning.